Greetings, my fellow from Los Alvin Thinkers. Thank you for tuning to LO3 Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful realms of planet Earth. And today's date is Tuesday, October 5th, 2021. Yeah, I just took a couple, a few days off just to readdress a couple things and all that good stuff. But I'm doing well. Hopefully everyone's doing the same. Yeah, everyone's talking about the whole thing with Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp has been down for a little bit, you know, sometimes it's good to get off of social media now and then, because remember this, folks, don't let it control you, you control it, without us, they're nothing, so all I gotta do is just sit back and think about it, <laughs> oh yeah, and of course, um, I was watching a couple of video clips, um, one, um, talking about the ramifications that be becoming soon. Down and down and down, down under Australia, December supposed to be an election year, and see, hopefully that will be any um, if the election will be genuine or not. Hopefully it is, because it looks like these folks are ready to do a Nuremberg 2.0 against their Australian government, including some members in its military. Person made had a lot of merit. He used the constitutionality of it. Why it's totally illegal. Very police state. And remember this, folks. If you support victim disarmament or banning firearms or trusting the government, go down there and tell me how what you think. That's to all you little activist hacks out there. These paper posing buffoons. I don't have to say any names. And there's another clip I've seen too. It's off a bit shoot. And um, gentleman was uh, doing his uh, filed a law a uh, uh, case in the Constitutional Court of South Africa based on COVID nineteen and of course COVID nineteen with the fundings and all that and there's a big huge conflict of interest. They even stated that one of the members it, was, it never went by their own supreme law of their land. Everything is, everything is all like bypassed and unilateral and want to support the party rather than the people. So they breached their oath there. And he recommended to do a vote of confidence on the parliament and do a direct vote without party. Because even members of the ANC, according to him, was saying they, they represent the party, not the people of South Africa. And you know what? I think this is great because it's all backfiring. And it's not just not just that. Even with the central banking, the Federal Reserve of uh, South Africa, it looks like one of the members of that institution is 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 the, represents the International Monetary Fund, Acrim IMF. Can we say conflict of interest? And he he attests to that. So he wants to end. The, he wants to get. To, he wants to be South Africa. Wants South Africa to be a sovereign nation. No chart global institutions by any means. So this is an exciting time. There's a lot of stuff you hear about the about the vaccine mandates and all that. And uh, there's some I know there's a lawsuit that happened in Gainesville, Florida, when the workers threw the city and they won. This is great because people are learning their laws and their rights, natural rights. And the state or government cannot do that to you. There's no such thing as involuntary servitude. Unless you're convicted of a crime, a la community service. Okay, so um, those, these are the, those are the facts, folks. Is A lot of great things are happening. Yes, it's going to be insane. And I, I know the, ship, the shipping ordeal, there was like... Um, a lot of ships out there in the docks. The claim is all being done by design. So, information war, trade wars, and all that. So, um, just prepare yourselves, folks. It may be a, a rocky Christmas time or Hanukkah, okay? Around the winter recess, whatever you want to call it. I don't get offended by those terms anyway. The words Hanukkah and Merry Christmas, hey, don't bother me one bit. Please, grow up. There's bigger things. That everyone should be focusing on. So, speaking of focusing and um, constitutional challenges, I was um, looking at this one from yesterday. 
It actually came out today. Uh, it came out yesterday. Oh, yeah, another thing, too, before I go, um, Florida leaders uh, rallied to Cassie DeSantis after breast cancer diagnosis, diagnosed with it, and um, don't get me wrong, like I said, politically, yeah, DeSantis is the thing that may be critical of him, from, of, but there's a lot of times he does right. Uh, but however, I'm not going to wish any of him or his family members ill. So, um, you know, put her, put her in your thoughts and blessings to her. Doesn't matter what your political views are, because never beat anyone when they're down. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to be reading here from FloridaPolitics.com, Supreme Court, to hear arguments over red light camera fees Tuesday. So it should be today. All right. The court rulings may have sweeping implications for dozens of municipal traffic enforcement against enforcement regimes across Florida. Arguments over a potential class action lawsuit over a so-called convenience fee drivers can be charged by a major red light camera company will go before the Supreme Court on Tuesday. The hearing comes eight months after the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals asked the Supreme Court to help resolve questions that may have sweeping implications for dozens of municipal traffic enforcement regimes across Florida and for the development of Florida common law. Those questions stem from a lawsuit motorist Stephen Pink, um, Pink, Pinkus filed after a camera operated by red light camera company American Traffic Solutions. Oh, they may be out of Tempe, Arizona. Captured him running a North Miami Beach red light in 2018. The company uh, tacked on a 5% fee to the $158 penalty. Pincus was required to pay for running a red light when he paid online with a credit card. Pincus had the option to avoid the $790 fee. He, uh, he, um, had he paid by mail using a check or money order. Pincus' uh, uh, lawsuit alleges the fee involved unjust enrichment under state law. According to the brief of Pincus' attorney, Brett Luskin, Filed March 25th, North Miami Beach executed a second amendment to its argument with traffic, American Traffic Solution allowing the company to charge, collect, and retain a convenience fee up to 5% to the to to total dollar amount of each electronic payment process with the fee paid by the violator. It is this provision that is the heart of the case, Luskin wrote. Despite what the city and ATS contend, neither is authorized to charge, collect, or retain any additional fines, fees, surcharges, or costs other than those fixed by state law in flouting this rule. All right, so ATS is fa has fashioned itself into a private traffic ticket factory, inflating almost every single civil penalty by 5% for his own profit, in addition to his contractual remuneration for operating the city's camera program. This is a gross violation of every Florida's flirting civil rights. Jo Joseph um, Lang Jr., Kevin McCoy, David Wright of the law firm Carlton Fields, which represents the company in the case, countered in a May 12th brief that the fee was an avoidable option Pincus chose of his own violation. He chose not to write a check or send a money order, options that do not include a convenience fee. They wrote, the convenience fee is not added to the penalty to increase the penalty amount. Nobody has to pay the convenience fee as part of the penalty. That is, the violate, uh, violator does not occur incur the convenience fee because the violator is a issue, a notice of violation. The violator chooses to pay the convenience fee in order to obtain the convenience of using a credit card. It is non-compulsory. A federal district judge initially dismissed the case, but a three-judge appeal panel, appellate panel, in February requested that the Florida State Supreme Court resolve questions it raised about how the state laws concerning the issue should be interpreted. The 31-page decision is cited an absence of guiding president on these questions. So I have to respect that move because it should be a state issue, not federal. And uh, so um, 
which is so I I'll give them props for that, and I say that in good faith. More than eight percent, eight million, excuse me, eight million notices have been issued for the red light camera violations in Florida, including more, uh, more than one million between July 2018 and June 2019. Judges Jill Pryor, Robin Rosenbaum, and Elizabeth Branch of the 11th uh, Circuit Court. Is this a circuit court? Yeah, hold on. It looks like I hit the wrong number. Yeah, 11th Circuit Court of Appeals wrote, in that period for elite, at least 46 jurisdictions in Florida operated red light cameras, all of which contra uh, contracted with American Traffic Solution or a similar vendor. They wrote, so the situation issues raised by this case, which will determine whether a vendor may add a surcharge to the red light camera penalties in exchange for permitting individuals to pay their penalties by credit card may affect millions of Floridians and dozens of Florida's municipal traffic enforcement regimes. Resolution of the common law issues may also reverberate throughout Florida, affecting Florida's unjust enrichment law across diverse contexts. The hearing is scheduled for 9 a.m., which is today, with a maximum of 20 minutes of argument allowed per, per side. Okay, so it's more like um, possibly in their chambers. Yeah, we'll just... We'll, We'll just wait and see here. But counsel is expected to use only so much of that time as is necessary, said a memo from Supreme Court clerk John Tasma, uh, Mancio. Tom, uh, Tom, yeah, John Tasmancio. Yeah, okay, cool. Sorry about that. Which stressed that no continuance would be granted to either side except upon a showing of extreme hardship. All right, so it looks like he can say, hey, yeah, he consent to this on his fee. And, of course, he can do the check or money, but he wants to make sure he got the receipt right at hand. Boom, confirmation number and all that, which is convenient. I'm not going to um, argue about that, okay? But here's the thing, okay? According to the Florida Constitution, Sometimes the public-private enterprise is very conflicting. All right, and uh, so I was like looking at this. I got uh, this question too with private prisons and all that as well. But it says here, Article Seven, Section Ten of the Florida Constitution, and Article Seven. Let me read here from Ballotpedia: Finance and Taxation. Okay, when you hit um, Section Ten, which is entitled Pledging Credit. So what I'm going to do is read this in its entirety. And hold on, I'm trying to get right to it here. Forgive me, folks. Yes, as it reads here, neither the state nor any county, school district, municipality, special district, or agency of any of them shall become a joint owner with or stockholder of or give the lend or use its taxing power or credit to aid any corporation, association, partnership, or person. But this shall not prohibit laws authorizing A. Investments of public lands. B. The investment of other public funds and obligations of insured by the United States or any of its municipalities, I mean instrumentalities. C. The issuance, issuance, yeah, and sale by county, municipality, special district, or other local governmental body of one revenue bonds to finance or refinance the cost of the capital project for airports or port facilities, or two revenue bonds to finance or refinance the cost of capital projects for industrial or manufacturing plants to the extent that the interest therein is exempt from income taxes under the existing laws of the United States when, in either case, the revenue bonds are payable solely from revenue derived from the sale operation or leasing of the projects. If any project so financed or any part, therefore, is occupied by or operated by any private corporation, association, partnership, or person pursuant to contract or lease with the issuing body, 
the property interest created by such contract or lease shall be subject to taxation to the same extent as other privately owned property. D, a municipality, county, special district, or agency of any of them being a joint owner of giving or lending or using its taxing power for credit for the joint ownership, construction, and operation of electrical energies generating or transmission facilities with any corporation, association, partnership, or person. So this is pretty interesting. So may, some people may find it a little bit sketchy here on the pledging credit. So I know some of the lawyers made it lawyers on the other other side may not agree may not agree with it. But when you look at this, sometimes they can say a public private enterprise in these certain conditions is a conflict of interest. And I have to re- respect that, and I have to agree. This is why um, I do see this, in my view, as a conflict with Article 7, Section 10 of, this, of the Florida Constitution when it comes to private, public-private enterprise. I'm not crazy about it. Okay, this is why I'm always observant the best I can. And it'll be interesting. So it looks like they're in progress as we speak. And what I'll do, I'll see if I'll... Get the latest update, and I'll um, make sure that will be coming up, up coming episode. So we'll find out. All right. Well, what's your intake on it? That's how I see it. So that will be it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or sentences, in share, check out whatever you do. Please send your correspondence to Corum for the more the footnotes of the of this article. On my uh, speaker page or episode. <laughs> if you want to donate, if you want to contact me, you can go via email, luckyluck03 at protemail.com. If you want to do a donation, you can go to paypal.me or cash.app forward slash luckyluck3. And if you want to subscribe to floridapolitics.com, that'd be fine to each his own. Observe responsibly, of course. Well, that would be it. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you. (laughs) 